Welcome back to a new episode of Wheels of History. Before we dive into today's story, we invite you to subscribe to the channel if you'd like to see more videos like this. For you, it's just a small gesture. But for us, it's essential to keep sharing the stories of vehicles that have made history. Today, we'll uncover the story of a one-of-a-kind motorcycle, the Honda NR750, the legendary Honda with oval pistons. Talking about the NR means delving into the history of one of the most important brands in the world and the philosophy of its founder, Soichiro Honda, as well as his profound passion for the four-stroke engine. Soichiro loved the four-stroke engine so much that he often referred to two-stroke engines as bamboo canes due to their relative simplicity and limited mechanical sophistication, which he considered incomparable to the four-stroke. It is therefore easy to understand why Honda dedicated its resources in racing to the development of four-stroke engines. Honda's debut in the World Championship dates back to 1959 with the RC141 and RC142 motorcycles in the 125cc category and the RC160 in the 250cc category, all equipped with four-stroke engines. These were followed by revolutionary models such as the RC146 of 1963, 125cc, four cylinders, seven gears, the RC148 of 1965, 125cc, five cylinders, eight gears, and the legendary RC166 of 1966, 250cc, six cylinders. The 125cc five-cylinder engine reached 34 GP at 20,000 revolutions per minute, while the 250cc delivered 54 GP at 17,000 revolutions per minute, achieving speeds of over 240 kilometers per h. Between 1959 and 1967, when Honda decided to withdraw from racing, the company collected 138 victories in the World Championship demonstrating both its love for four-stroke engines and its technological prowess. However, when Honda decided to return to the World Championship 12 years later, it faced a completely transformed reality. Two-stroke engines now dominated the scene. Nevertheless, Honda remained steadfast, determined to continue developing four-stroke engines, even as the competition increasingly turned to the lighter, higher-performing two-stroke engines. In 1970, the FIM imposed regulatory limits to bring racing motorcycles closer to road models, banning engines with more than four cylinders in the 500cc class. This impacted Honda significantly as its competitive identity was built on engines with extreme configurations. When Honda announced its return to racing in 1978, the regulations still mandated a maximum of four cylinders, a standard already adopted by its competitors. Honda thus began with a theoretical disadvantage compared to its rivals, being forced to forego its distinctive technical philosophy. How could one design a 500cc four-stroke engine, limited to four cylinders, that could compete with the overwhelming supremacy of two strokes? Legend has it that the project leader found inspiration in the memory of the glorious Gutsi V8. Not a traditional eight-cylinder, but a revolutionary concept, paired combustion chambers capable of simulating the behavior of an eight-cylinder engine, an idea as mad as it was brilliant. In 1978, the program was officially launched with the goal of creating a Grand Prix engine that would break the mold. Despite the 500cc class regulations limiting displacement to four cylinders, Honda was undeterred. Their response was the introduction of a V4 engine with a 100-degree bank angle, but with oval pistons instead of traditional circular ones. While the term oval wasn't entirely accurate, since the pistons featured two semicircular curved sides and two straight sides, it was under this label that they entered the annals of legend. This choice allowed the inclusion of no fewer than eight valves per cylinder and the use of two connecting rods per piston. The goal was to create an engine that replicated the functioning of an eight-cylinder engine, but with combustion chambers paired in twos, thereby complying with the regulation limiting the maximum number of cylinders to four. A critical detail of this engineering was the structure of the NR engine, which aimed for a stellar rotation regime, targeting 23,000 revolutions per minute and a power output of around 130 horsepower. However, the attempt to create a four-stroke engine with the performance of a two-stroke led to immense technical challenges. 
The engineers faced unprecedented mechanical problems, deformation of piston rings, connecting rod failures, and the inability to maintain piston stability at such high speeds. They began by developing a single cylinder engine with an oval piston and two valves, gradually increasing complexity until reaching the eight valve configuration envisioned in the project. After numerous trials, the first single cylinder engine with an oval piston and two valves was completed and subsequently evolved to eight valves. However, the results on the track fell far short of expectations. The NRV4 engine never exceeded 16,000 revolutions per minute and reached only 100 horsepower, well below projections. The NR500's debut in the 1979 Grand Prix season was a failure. Riders Mick Grant and Takazumi Katayama failed to finish the race at the Silverstone Grand Prix. While at Le Mans, the bikes didn't even qualify due to lap times that were too slow. The motorcycle, aside from being unreliable, was also difficult to handle, with overly abrupt power delivery, significant issues with engine braking, and 20 kilograms more weight compared to its competitors. Between 1980 and 1981, the NR project underwent several significant modifications with the introduction of evolved versions such as the 1X and 2X. These variants featured a new frame and an engine block with a different bank angle. In 1982, new cylinder heads were introduced with a revised valve angle, finally allowing the engine to achieve the power levels originally envisioned. However, the lack of significant results in Grand Prix racing led even the most ardent supporters of the project to acknowledge its failure. That same year, Honda adopted a new strategy with the NS500, a three-cylinder V-engine two-stroke, which proved immediately successful, securing a podium finish in its debut. The following year, Freddie Spencer brought the World Championship title in the 500cc class back to Tokyo. In 1984, the NSR four-cylinder arrived, dominating the class until the end of the 500cc era in 2002. Meanwhile, in 1983, a final evolution of the NR500, called the 3X, was developed but was never raced. Although the NR3X never competed, the engine achieved 130 horsepower at 19,000 revolutions per minute during bench tests marking the peak potential of the NR family, which nonetheless failed to find success on the track. The NR program found greater success in the world of endurance racing. In 1981, a version of the NR secured victory at the 500km Suzuka race thanks to its more efficient fuel management. In 1987, a few years later, the NR returned to the track with the 750cc version, featuring significantly modified technical specifications compared to earlier models. The engine delivered 155 horsepower at 15,250 revolutions per minute. The focus was on the legendary 24 hours of Le Mans, where the bike, entrusted to the team of Malcolm Campbell, Gilbert Roy and Ken Nomoto, qualified in second place. During the race, the NR held the third position for about three hours, but was forced to retire due to mechanical failure. Despite this, Campbell remained particularly fond of the bike, using it in local Australian races such as the Swan Series, where he even won a heat at Calder Park. These marked the final official appearances of the NR in racing. Even though the new racing program officially ended, the project was far from over. In 1992, the NR750 road bike, also known as the RC40, made its definitive debut. Presented at the Tokyo Motor Show, the NR750 retained the innovative feature of oval pistons. The motorcycle represented the pinnacle of Honda's four-stroke engine technology in motorcycling, even though it never achieved major commercial success. By then, the oval piston design was no longer a groundbreaking technical novelty. The Honda NR750 was produced in a limited run, becoming one of the most sought-after treasures for motorcycle enthusiasts and collectors. Despite the project's lack of success in the racing world, the NR750 became one of the most legendary motorcycles in Honda's history. The bike stood out for its uniqueness, featuring an oval piston engine and innovative materials such as carbon fiber, titanium and magnesium. With only 322 units produced, priced at 91 million lira, it became a rare collectible. The NR750's design derived directly from the endurance racing versions, but it underwent mechanical taming to make it more suitable for everyday use, though still highly exclusive. 
While theoretically designed for road use, parking it outside a cafe or commuting to work, its hidden capabilities were anything but ordinary. A transverse 90-degree V4 engine with oval pistons, double overhead camshafts, DOHC, and titanium connecting rods. The engine produced 125 horsepower at the crankshaft and 115 at the rear wheel. The frame was an aluminum perimeter design derived from the legendary RC30, featuring a single-sided aluminum swing arm and pro-link rear suspension. The Showa 45mm inverted forks were fully adjustable. The Nissin braking system included twin 310mm front discs with four-piston calipers and a 220mm rear disc with a two-piston caliper. The wheels measured 16 inches at the front and 17 inches at the rear. The bike also boasted exclusive details such as a carbon fibre fairing, a rare material at the time, typically reserved for race bikes, a 17-litre aluminum fuel tank and magnesium wheels. The windscreen, treated with titanium, displayed a blue sheen, while the ignition key was crafted from silver and carbon fiber. The dashboard combined analog and digital elements featuring an LCD speedometer, a tachometer redlining at 17,000 revolutions per minute, and indicators for oil temperature and pressure, coolant temperature and fuel level. The airbox, located beneath the tank, drew air through four intakes, two in the lower fairing and two in the nose, with carbon ducts channeling the airflow with sophisticated precision. Despite the evolution of the project, the ambitious target of 160 horsepower was scaled down to 140 and finally 115 horsepower. The main limitation lay in the torque. The engine's stroke, reduced to just 42 mm, provided modest power at low and mid-range RPMs. The engine, fed by an electronic fuel injection system with two injectors per cylinder, remained a marvel of engineering, but struggled to translate this complexity into satisfying road performance. Despite these challenges, the NR750 achieved moments of glory. With Loris Caparossi at the helm, the bike set a world record as the fastest production motorcycle, reaching nearly 300 km per h in the standing kilometer and achieving a top speed of 304 km per h at the Nardo ring. For some, this was a romantic attempt to challenge top speed records with a production bike. For others, the true value of the NR lay in being the first and only production motorcycle with oval pistons. Yet the NR750 wasn't only extraordinary because of its engine. It was a bike that anticipated trends with technical solutions that profoundly influenced motorcycle design. Among these were the single-sided swing arm, a mechanical masterpiece and under-seat exhausts elegantly integrated into a fairing featuring Nassier air ducts. The NR750, with all its complexity and boldness, remains a symbol of Honda's ability to push the boundaries of innovation when passion and technology intertwine. Despite its struggles on the track, the Honda NR has gone down in history as a symbol of engineering innovation. Decades later, it continues to represent how the drive for technological progress and the challenge of pushing limits can create legends in the world of motorcycles. The NR750 is now a rare and coveted piece, a rolling laboratory that showcases Honda's engineering prowess and its unrelenting pursuit of excellence, always inspired by its racing heritage. We'll stop here for now, but the journey of legends continues. Thank you for watching this video, and if you'd like to see more content like this, stay tuned to the channel.